Hello friends, this is Helga Alexi from the Cardiology Forum and today I present you a case of a 55-year-old female who presents in the emergency department with a new onset of chest pain since 6 hours with a known coronary artery disease and peripheral artery disease. The initial ECG is not available but showed some ST elevation in the anterior chest wall leads. Here's her initial coronary angiogram. As you can see, the right coronary artery is already stented from the proximal to distal part without any significant stenosis. There are also collaterals from the right coronary artery to the left coronary system. On the left coronary system, you can see a only mildly diseased left circumflex. The LAD is heavily atherosclerotic and diseased with a medial ectasia directly in front of an old stent well the vessel is subtotal occluded. Therefore we performed the PCI of the medial part of the LID with one long stent. And after that, we implanted another stand with some overlap to the proximal part. Finally, we optimized the proximal part of the stand with a non-compliant balloon, and this is the final result. Unfortunately, the lady started to refuse taking her drugs uh, in the next days and split the drugs uh, out into the bed without notice uh, of the nurses and uh, started to um, regain chest pain again and presented with the following ECG three days later. As you can see there are huge ST elevation in the anterior chest wall leads and we took her immediately to the cath lab again and uh, this is what we took as first picture. This is a deleterious situation with acute stent thrombosis of our proximal LID stent due to not having taken the DAPT. Rewiring of the vessel was no problem due to the soft um, thrombus we had there and we immediately um, tried to reopen and regain flow in this vessel by dilating, forming uh, thrombus aspiration with export catheter, um, applicating tarofaban um, and a spale out situation even tried to stand the first part but unfortunately we were never able to restore flow in the vessel. Furthermore to the um, comorbidities she had and amputated left lower limb and the extended peripheral oral disease she was no candidate for a cabbage surgery, which is why she developed an extended anterior wall myocardial infarction. Here I show you the echo loops where you can clearly see an um, echinacea of the apex and the anterior wall and a highly reduced uh, ejection fraction of the ventricle. This case horribly brings us to mind how crucial the regularly intake of the DAPT and the patient compliance is. So I hope you enjoyed watching this video. If you did so, subscribe to the channel, give us your thumbs up. Take care. Yours Helga Lexi. Bye bye.